Here are two words that many English speakers often use incorrectly. The words are infer and imply. First of all, the word infer means to deduce or conclude something from evidence and reasoning rather than from explicit statements. To come to a conclusion based on what you felt was meant, even though it was not said directly, is to infer. I infer from what you said. Then there is the word imply, which means to make slight hints and suggestions while speaking or writing. You make comments that suggest something without being too blatant or obvious. The person making the comments implies, while the person listening to the comments infers. So to infer is to come to a conclusion from what you hear and imply is to suggest something by what you say. It is common for native English speakers to confuse infer with imply. I wonder what you will infer from the following statement. It's Sunday afternoon, it's 2 p.m. here in the UK and this is Live English. Do you know what theme that is? Do you know what which, which movie that is taken from? Do you know which movie that's taken from? Do you know? It's Jaws. Oh, I love film music. I bet right now, if I were to ask you what your favourite piece of movie music is, I bet you would say the theme from Titanic. My heart will go on and on. Hi everybody, how are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. Yes, my name is Mr Duncan and I'm here once again on YouTube Live. It's Sunday. We are now two weeks into 2018. How has your year been so far? Has it been a good year? I really, really hope so. Because, of course, lots of people at the moment are wishing Happy New Year! Happy New Year! When does it become too late to say Happy New Year? How many days into the new year can you actually say Happy New Year before it becomes offensive? So I think the first seven or eight days of the new year is OK. But after that, I think it's inappropriate. So you only have to say Happy New Year for the first seven or eight days. Although yesterday I was in town and lots of people were wishing each other Happy New Year. Still, it's nearly two weeks since the new year arrived and people are still wishing each other Happy New Year, I must admit. So let us keep our fingers crossed this week that we don't have any technical problems. Remember last week we had some problems Thank you very much once again to my local phone company for cutting me off. So can we all keep our fingers crossed today that we don't have any problems with the connection? So here we go again. Lots of things coming today. I'm having a lovely cup of coffee at the moment. It's very unusual for me to have a cup of coffee during the actual live stream, but I'm having one today. It's delicious. Mmm. Oh, lovely. Not too sweet. But I love my coffee strong. I don't drink a lot of coffee. But what about you? Would you describe yourself as a tea or coffee person? Are you a person who enjoys a cup of tea? Or do you like to have a cup of coffee? Now, some people are addicted to they are addicted to coffee. They, they drink many, many cups of coffee every single day. 
and there is something that always annoys me about coffee some people say that coffee is good for your health whilst others say it's bad for you so what is the truth it's the same with wine <laughs> a lot of people say oh wine it's good for you then other people say that wine is bad for you it's very confusing so what are you would you describe yourself are you a tea or coffee person so how would you describe yourself would you like to have a cup of tea right now or would you like to have a cup of coffee so at the moment I'm having a delicious cup of coffee live on YouTube mmm absolutely delicious so if you are enjoying your beverage at the moment beverage that's a great word beverage just means a drink so any type of drink can be described as a beverage so cheers everyone if you are having your tea or coffee at the moment so here we go the first question of course must be what was the view like this morning what was the view out of my window like well let's have a look shall we let's go through the window right now it is a very murky cold damp day if you look in the distance you can just about see the mountain the Reekin hill it's not a mountain a lot of people tell me off they say mr duncan the Reekin is not a mountain it is actually a hill okay <laughs> some people are so pedantic so there it is the view this morning it's very murky very misty it feels quite unpleasant outside oh look did you see that the pigeons the pigeons are flying around there they are can you see them they are all landing on the tree <laughs> so there it is the view from the window this morning it is a very murky day and of course this week oh this week was a very special week for me do you know why because this week we reached 600,000 subscribers this week so now I have passed the 600,000 subscriber mark oh <gasps> isn't that exciting so thank you very much thanks to all those who have decided to join me over the past few weeks and of course a big thank you to those who have been watching for many many years talking of thank you can i say a very big thank you to andrea santi thank you very much andrea for your super super donation and also christmas present as well thank you very much once again to andrea santi for your lovely kind donation that you sent to me through paypal thank you very much because a lot of people like to make donations small or large and there is the address if you would like to send a donation to help my work continue because doing this does cost a lot of money there's lots of things i have to do lots of things i have to buy lots of things i have to pay for and of course there is lots of equipment that helps me to go live so you are more than welcome to make a donation through paypal it's very simple you don't have to give any details you don't have to give your address or your credit card so there you go it's so easy and can i thank you in advance now last week i noticed some people were getting very upset because they couldn't find the subtitles on my videos so here we go i'm going to mention this again so after the live stream has finished normally a few hours later you can actually watch captions or subtitles but you have to click the symbol you have to click this which is underneath the video and then you can watch the subtitles so still a lot of people thinking that i don't have subtitles on my latest videos but they are there trust me they are there 
let's have a look at the live chat shall we because the live chat is of course open let's see what is going on on the live chat Dilara May Tavuk oh thank you very much for joining me today hello everybody says Johel hello to you as well Kanul or Connell we love tea in Azerbaijan we like tea very much we always drink tea in the morning and any time hello Bella marvelous mr. Duncan hello to mr. Steve as well more about mr. Steve in a moment hello mr. Duncan from Martha also Alice Mohammed analytic brain Jamal Marie mr. Duncan do you like green tea yes I used to drink a lot of green tea when I lived in China quite a lot of that was consumed whilst teaching in China hello mr. Duncan from Ireland Kumant uh, Ulitas hello to you thank you very much for joining me Tavuk is a Turkish word which means chicken oh thank you very much Tavuk and a special buk, 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 buk to you Olga is here thank you Olga watching in Moscow also Reka hello mr. Duncan nice to see you again and it's super duper to see you again as well mr. Steve is a very big fan of herbal tea so thank you Chris for your question do you have coffee with sugar yes I do I, I do like to put a little bit of sugar in my coffee so thank you Alice for that question hello mr. Duncan from Ashwani hello to you as well it's so nice to see so many people here today thank you so much for joining me of course this is now live it's quarter past two don't forget <laughs> oh dear coming up today at three o'clock live with lots of things to talk about it is mr. Steve Adieu. yes we are live as live can be thank you very much for joining me today it's mr. Duncan that's me and I have been teaching English right here on YouTube for over 11 years and of course 2018 is the 12th year that I've been right here on YouTube teaching English so mr. Steve coming later on did you see him there he was doing his exercises that is actually from last week when he was getting very excited in the studio talking all about his exercise routine today we are talking about some very heavy topics today we are going to discuss censorship is there any censorship in your country do you think it is right to censor things so this is a subject that is often talked about in the news I know it's a very heavy subject and for some people it is a very sensitive subject but I think it's a very interesting thing to talk about because even in countries where you think there is no censorship there actually is censorship so even though you might think say for example here in the UK you might think there is no censorship here but in fact there is so it might be fair to say that censorship is something that is very widespread but of course you might say that the level of censorship varies between each country so hello and we are going to talk about some big subjects also coming up later on mr. Steve will be here yes he is here he has a lot of fans and today we are talking about 
censorship we are going to talk about plastic because this week many people once again a very sensitive subject are talking about pollution and the effect that plastic has on the environment so if you have something to say about that you are more than welcome to get involved it is not just my show it is also your show as well and that is the reason why we are here to share our ideas and of course to learn some English yes indeed it's been very busy this week here in much Wenlock oh my goodness so many things have been going on right here in my hometown this week for example we've had lots of disruption this week because there are some roadworks taking place lots of things happening around the town center the place in which i live much wenlock and as you can see there are lots of roadworks lots of signs telling people where to go and can you see the sign it says work starts here on behalf of western power distribution one-way system will be in operation from the 8th of january 2018 for approximately five weeks that's what the sign says so there it is so there is some disruption at the moment taking place right here in the town and one or two people have been complaining about it now i've been trying to find out what they are actually doing why are they digging up the road well apparently there are some electrical cables that are normally overhead so what they are going to do they are going to take the electric cables that are above everyone and they are going to put them under the ground so apparently that's what they are doing they are actually putting the electricity cables under the ground now where i live many of the electrical cables are actually above the ground they are actually on top of tall poles and that includes where i live so it looks as if that's what they are doing at the moment they are actually putting the electric cables under the ground instead of them being above the ground thank you tavok tavok just said my teacher suggested your youtube channel and said you are very friendly thank you very much tavok for that that's very kind of you so there you can see there there is some roadworks taking place right here in the place i live and many people ask mr duncan where do you live the place i live in is called much wenlock and as i said just it's been a very busy week here lots of things going on this week much wenlock was on television on the bbc more about that in a moment and also we had some very dramatic events taking place here this week lots of bad things happened this week in the place i live more about that in a moment as well and of course every saturday it is worth mentioning that every saturday we go for a lovely meal mr steve and myself we go for a lovely meal in the town center would you like to see mr steve buying some bread yesterday okay then here we go this is mr steve and myself in much wenlock square yesterday afternoon oh hi everybody welcome once again to the place in which i live this is much wenlock and it's mr duncan yes here i am this is not live of course this is now saturday afternoon and i'm in town but the big question is where is mr steve where is mr steve where is mr steve oh 
There's Mr. Steve, but where is he going? Mr. Steve is going somewhere, but where is he going? Mr. Steve is going to the local baker's. He's going to pick up some bread. So here we are in Much Wenlock. Of course, this is the place in which I live. Thank you very much for joining me live today. It's very nice to see you once again. Of course, Much Wenlock is a very famous place. In fact, it's even more famous now because last night Much Wenlock was on television. Yes, on the BBC, no less. Can you believe it? So Mr. Steve is now in the baker's shop. He's buying some bread, as I mentioned just now. But what will he buy? Hopefully, Mr. Steve will be willing to show us the bread that he bought. And I have a feeling he's going to come back with at least two bags of bread. I think so. Well, I hope so. For those wondering where I am, I'm actually in the square, the main square here in Much Wenlock, a place where I often come to do my shopping. Here he comes, Mr. Steve is coming back. He's done his bread shopping. Mr. Steve. Oh, hello, Mr. Steve. So, um, here we are then. We're, we're in Much Wenlock once again. Of course, this is the place in which we live, isn't it? It certainly is. <laughs> and uh, yes, I've just been to the bread shop to get some nice fresh bread. Steve, uh, can, can you show us what you've bought? Now, we, we love eating bread, don't we? Now, certain types of bread are, are seen as unhealthy, but other types of bread are seen as very healthy and, dare I say, nutritious. So would you like to show us what you bought We've got both types in here. This is the healthy one. Look at this seed. There's lots of seeds in here and uh, it's brown bread, so lots of fiber. So that's, uh, it's that, that's I call it GI bread. It's supposed to keep your blood sugar stable. G GI bread. Don't ask me to say what that is. <laughs> Uh, but it's called GI bread, so it keeps uh, it, it's very low in sugar. But this one here, look at this. <gasps> oh, I like I like the look of this. This, look at that. That's a tiger bread. It's a huge loaf. It's white bread with with uh, a sort of a coating on it that makes it look like tiger skin. Anyway, it's delicious, and it's all mine. <laughs> now, Mr. 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 Steve. Mr. Steve seems to think that he's going to eat all of the bread, but I have, a, I have a feeling that I'm going to be eating quite a lot of it as well. Hey, last night, guess what? Yes, I've mentioned it already, but I'm going to mention it again. Much Wenlock, the place we live in, was actually on television and we watched it last night. Did you enjoy seeing Much Wenlock on television, Mr. Steve? Yes, it was, uh, it was fascinating. In fact, we saw some people that we knew and we're going to go up to them later and say, uh, did you, can we have your autograph? You're on the telly last night. Oh, but a bit of local gossip from in there, not gossip. There were lots of break-ins in Much Wenlock last night. Really? Yes. So, so this is actually breaking news, literally. Breaking news. So apparently last night there were lots of break-ins, lots of places were broken into, lots of places had a disturbance in the night. It looks as if quite a few places have been broken into. So some thieves broke into some of the places in Much Wenlock. <gasps> so who, who told who told you this, Steve? Where, where did you get this information from? In the, in the bakery. Uh, they said that, uh, that uh, about six places were all broken into the local pub, the art gallery, uh, the uh, news agent and a few houses all had their doors kicked in and there was blood in one. It's, it's the most exciting thing that's ever happened in much Wenlock. We don't want it, of course. We don't want crime in a small little town like this, but it looks like we've got it. Crime has come to much Wenlock. Oh my goodness, it's very dramatic. And around about Christmas, uh, just before Christmas, I think, the, the local spa shop which is ju just over the way from the square, that was also broken into. So it, it would appear that there is a slight crime wave 
taking place here in Much Wenlock. But normally the place is very quiet, very peaceful and very relaxing. And that's why we live here, because we love it really. So Mr. Steve, what are we going to do now? What are, what are we going to do now, Mr. Steve? We're going to have our regular Saturday meal at the Copper Kettle, which uh, we've already pre-ordered, and it's going to be beef stew and dumplings. <laughs> oh yes, because I love beef stew and dumplings. And the person who helps to run the place we are going now to eat was on television last night so I think she might be feeling very excited today because she was on television but one of the questions today is have you ever been on television now I have I've been on television in the past have you been on St on TV Steve have you ever been on television Steve uh, not that I know of, Mr. Duncan. Uh, not uh, officially. Obviously, I'm being filmed now by you, but this isn't going out on the television. Uh, but no, as far as I know, I've never been filmed on television. So uh, maybe one day, <laughs> maybe I'll have to do something to get on television. I could be the famous or infamous. Do something. Yeah, I, th I think there's a pretty good chance that Mr. Steve will be infamous so there's famous which is good and infamous which is bad it is a negative word so normally people who have done bad things are described as infamous so mr steve we are about to go and have something to eat and we will return you back to the studio so we will see you a little bit later yes bye for now our stomachs will be bulging after this meal. I think so. I, I must admit, I'm really looking forward to today's meal because stew and dumplings is my favourite meal of all. So that's all from us in the centre of Much Wenlock. We'll now return you back to the studio. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Oh, hello there. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? That was yesterday in Much Wenlock and during the night, the previous night. In fact, it was on Friday night. There were lots of robberies, lots of break ins. Many buildings, many shops were broken into. Now, the thing is, if you watch that video again later, if you look at it very closely, you will notice that there is actually evidence of all of the break-ins right behind us. If you take a close look here, right behind where we're sitting, you can actually see the broken window of one of the doors. Look, a broken door right behind us whilst we were talking so just to prove that there there actually was a spate of robberies spate if there is a spate of something it means something occurs many times over a short period of time spate so there were a spate of robberies a spate of break-ins many places were damaged so just to prove it there is one of the broken doors right behind where we were sitting 
now we're not sure at the moment why they did it now some people think it was just vandalism so maybe some people were just going around smashing all the windows for fun why would you do that why would you smash a window for fun i don't know i don't know why but there you go sometimes bad things happen sometimes they do it isn't a perfect world unfortunately and just to prove it we are talking about another thing today that some people get very annoyed about we are talking about censorship today hello mr duncan a couple of weeks ago our government tried to censor a picture uh, one of the memes that was going around the internet let's just see if we can find out who that's from for your light thank you very much for that pedro belmont says vandalism i have learned a new word yes vandalism a vandal is a person who breaks or smashes or destroys things for no reason they do it for fun or they do it because they are bored vandalism yes it's a great word that although it isn't a very good action to be honest jeff the ban on google or the chinese government who bans that well uh, we were talking about china last week um and in china of course youtube is banned it is actually blocked in china so you can't watch youtube in china although of course there are lots of people who use special ipns they can actually get around the great firewall of china so yes there are some people who are against censorship and china now has been banning or blocking youtube for nearly 10 years so almost 10 years now YouTube and many of the Google services I think also Twitter and Facebook are also banned or blocked in China so censorship is very prevalent in China and that is one of the things that China is well known for besides being very large china is also well known for having lots of censorship in the video you mentioned that you have appeared on tv was it in china or in england thank you dima for your message um actually it was in china would you like to see me on television in china <laughs> Do you really want to see me now on television in China? OK, then here we are. Here we go back in time to 2003. And here I am on Chinese television. So now let's give the stage to Mr. Duncan. Hello, how are you? Are you okay? I can't hear you. Hello, are you okay? That's better. I'm very happy to be here today. It's a great honor for me to be here performing. It's also a great honor for me to listen to the wonderful students who have worked so hard practicing and learning, studying English. English is fun. English is also important. Remember the two rules of English. One, be clear when you are speaking. And two, be confident. Remember, confidence builds your English. It can help you. It will help you. My name, by the way, is Duncan. I come from England, from the UK. <laughs> oh, OK, that's enough of that. No more of that, please. So there I was way back in 2003. Yes, lots of people now are doing this. They are working out on their hands 
how long ago that was yes it was a very long time ago I'm not saying that it was 15 years ago but it might have been 15 years ago it's true I'm not joking mr. Duncan you were very thin in 2003 <laughs> I spent most of my life being very thin and skinny to be honest so even when I was a kid I was a kid when I was a child I was very very thin as well in fact my mother used to take me to the doctors all the time she used to say this there must be something wrong with him he's so thin but the doctor said don't worry don't worry mr. Duncan's mum he's got a very high metabolism and it's true because I used to eat food all the time so thank you for your lovely comments mr. Duncan and mr. Steve are apparently eye candy thank you Jamelia <laughs> that's very kind of you to say <laughs> if someone is eye candy it normally means that they are very attractive and sexy <laughs> what an elegant coat mr. Duncan yes I remember wearing that coat I remember also feeling very nervous when I appeared on Chinese television mr. Duncan you look the same age as you do now where is your own Dorian Gray portrait oh yes thank you Amanda for that that is a story a famous story about uh, a person who managed to keep young who managed to stay young by keeping a portrait of themselves in i think it was in the cellar or in the attic and the picture got older but the person did not although if memory serves me correct i think the story has a very horrible ending i think so censorship what does censorship mean well of course censorship just means to stop certain things being said or written you you make sure that no one sees it so censorship is something that has existed for a very long time and in many places it still exists including here in the UK now a lot of people think that we are very open and very free here in the UK but we do have certain types of censorship here as well there are certain things you can't say there are certain things you can't do and there are certain things you can't support for example so there are many many good examples we mentioned China earlier there are a lot of censorship issues in China also I suppose the most obvious one <laughs> if we are going to be obvious the most obvious one is North Korea so many people now think of North Korea also I suppose to be fair we also have places like Iran where there is a lot of censorship of course Iran very much in the news at the moment so censorship does exist in many places even in the USA a lot of people think that the USA has no censorship but they do they have certain types of censorship so I think it would be fair to say that censorship exists on many different levels many different types of censorship now here are a couple of words I suppose we could look at if I can find them here we go so here are words here are two words that are often associated with censorship so we have the word oppress oppress the word oppress means to keep someone in subjection and hardship you keep them down you stop them from becoming or educated especially by the unjust exercise of authority for example a system which oppressed the working people so when we talk about oppression we are talking about keeping people at a low level of income class and I suppose it would be fair to say education as well so from oppress we go to suppress another great word 
although not a very nice thing to actually have happen to you suppress the meaning forcibly put an end to something so you suppress something suppress so if you suppress something it means you forcibly put an end to something for example the rising was savagely suppressed to prevent the development action or expression of a feeling impulse or idea you restrain these things she could not suppress a rising panic and also to prevent the dissemination of information to disseminate means to give out or distribute and of course prevent or inhibit a process or reaction so a lot of people think of the final definition when they talk about suppression so to prevent or inhibit to hold back to forcibly stop things from happening by force normally so there it is two words suppress and oppress these are two words that are often associated with censorship i hope that was helpful to you it is live english on a sunday afternoon i hope you are feeling well today there has been another topic in the news this week that many people have been talking about and that is plastic or more precisely plastic bags and here is a video that i made in 2015 talking all about plastic bags in october 2015 the uk government decided to put a levy on plastic carrier bags in england which would bring it in line with the rest of the uk which already had a levy in place a levy is a form of monetary charge or tax normally implemented as a way of raising funds a levy can also be brought in as a way of changing behavior such as a levy on tobacco or a levy on alcohol the plastic bag levy was originally introduced so as to discourage people from constantly taking free carrier bags each time they did their grocery shop for many years it has been reported that discarded plastic bags were creating environmental issues the production and disposal of these handy items has for a long time been widely seen as problematic by conservation groups the habit of picking up a few plastic bags during every shopping trip had to be broken and a levy seemed the best way to do it before the charge was introduced it was decided that the levy itself would be five pence per required bag which means that if your supermarket shopping requires six new plastic bags for packing you will be charged 30p extra on your shopping bill the concept of charging for each bag used ensures that money will be raised for good causes while at the same time making people aware of the need for them to reuse the bags they already have stored at home you could say that the levy serves as a gentle way of prodding the general public into changing a particular habit what is interesting about this exercise is that the charge itself is quite small five pence per bag does seem like a very tiny amount of money to pay however even a levy as small as that would seem to be enough to get people to change their neglectful and careless ways in july 2016 it was reported that by the end of the year the use of plastic carrier bags in england will have decreased by 83 percent meaning that the levy scheme had worked not only that but the money raised so far by the 5p charge had totaled over 41 million pounds 
with a portion of the money going to environmental causes. The upshot of this is that there has been an actual change in the behaviour of the general public regarding how they use and reuse their plastic carrier bags. So, the psychology of and the attitude towards our plastic bag use has been altered by nothing more than a few carefully worded campaigns and, of course, the 5p levy. But what exactly has this done to our brains? Would it be fair to say that this change in behaviour has in some way altered our brains? Has it in some way made us more environmentally aware? Perhaps a few new synapses have been created up here by this new attitude that we've been coerced into adopting. I know from my own shopping habits that I've sometimes had to turn back halfway down my driveway after realising that I didn't have a carrier bag with me. There is no way I'm going to pay 5p for a carrier bag when I have piles of them stashed away in a cupboard back home. These days my brain won't let me go anywhere without at least one rolled up carrier bag in my coat pocket. You know, just in case. Words used today. Intrigue. Arouse the interest or curiosity of something. Or to make secret plans. The secret planning of something. A mysterious or fascinating quality. Levy. To impose a charge or tax. A penalty or fine. A charge or tax. A penalty or fine. Psychology. The study of the human mind. The attitude and way of thinking among people. The way in which the mind works. Behaviour created by thought. Mental factors governing a situation. Implement. Put something into practice. Carry out a plan or idea by putting it into effect. Prod. To poke something with a finger or sharp object. To coerce and encourage by persuasion. To encourage a reluctant person to do something. Stash. To put something away in a safe or secure place. To place many things in one place for storage. Items hidden away for safekeeping or to be used. Yes, here we are today. It is a Sunday afternoon here in the UK and it is live English. I hope you are OK today. How has the year been so far? We are 14 days into the new year. How has 2018 been for you so far? I hope it's been a good one. Are you a tea person? or a coffee person now I know here in the UK lots of people enjoy drinking coffee in fact I think it would be fair to say that there are some people who are addicted to coffee you never hear of people addicted to tea <laughs> but you do often hear people talking about being addicted to coffee and I had a cup of coffee earlier the only problem is I don't know if you have this problem but I have it whenever I drink a cup of coffee I always feel very thirsty afterwards so I'm drinking a, a lot of water now because I had a cup of coffee during the start of today's live stream Mr. Steve will be here. Yes, he will. Mr. Steve will be here 
at three o'clock. <laughs> Mr. Steve likes to do his exercises all the time. He is always doing it. Mystery idiom time. A lot of people are saying, Mr. Duncan, where are the mystery idioms? I haven't forgotten, honestly. Yes. I did forget. I I'm very sorry for forgetting please forgive me mystery idioms are on their way right now here they are so today's mystery idioms for those who like to look at the mystery idioms and try to work out what they are just say what you see they these are well-known expressions in English so what is the idiom and here is the second one <laughs> This took me a long time to create, by the way, so I hope you appreciate all the hard work I put into creating these mystery idiom pictures. And here is the first one again for those who missed it. Today's mystery idioms, just say what you see. And the second one once again. <laughs> I think this one is is quite easy if you look at what is happening so there is a clue for the second one just look at what is happening what do you think is happening there and that will give you the answer to the mystery idiom and there is the first one again but what are they the mystery idioms every week right here on live English yes I am now live it is five minutes away from three o'clock yes it is five minutes to go before Mr. Steve arrives. Lots of people on the live chat. Let's have a quick look, shall we, at what is going on on the internet. I like coffee, says Alam Gear. Yes, a lot of people seem to like coffee very much. Now, I remember when I was in Turkey, when I visited Turkey, I noticed lots of people seem to enjoy drinking tea. In fact, I was invited to visit someone's shop where they were very, very hospitable and they gave me a lovely cup of tea and also some Turkish delight as well. There was a very hard censorship in the Soviet Union. The Communist Party inhibited all progressive scientists, artists and writers many of them had to leave the USSR yes that happened many years ago certainly during what many people refer to as the Cold War the Cold War so that was a period of time where the West and Russia were not communicating or not communicating openly and of course some people are saying now that the Cold War is returning Thank you very much to Tahil. I like green tea, says Tala. Thank you very much for that. Tran Tai says, oh, yes, very good there. Thank you very much for that. Jamelia also says, concerning coffee, I love white coffee or a good cafe a la cream or a la creme. Oh, I see. So that's coffee and cream. <gasps> Yes, I must admit, I, I love coffee and cream very much. It is nice, but also very unhealthy. Because if you drink too much, you will get fat. Hello, I am from where? Maria. Maria Regura. Regura, where are you from? Eugene is here. Hello, Eugene. Nice to see you. I drink both kinds of these beverages. A beverage is a drink tea and coffee I prefer them both without sugar I wish I wish I could do that I really do I know I do 
I do consume a lot of sugar I eat a lot of sugar I put sugar in my tea and in my coffee so yes I, I really do wish I had the strength to to not put sugar in my tea and coffee I really do wish that was the case we are just three minutes away from mr. Steve he's not here yet I don't know where he is he hasn't arrived yet so come on mr. Steve get a move on I don't know what he's doing <laughs> he's doing something maybe he's in the other room doing his physical exercises I think so Omar says I cannot live without coffee well you are not on your own there there are a lot of people a lot of people like drinking coffee especially here one of the things I, I dislike about coffee is how expensive it is to drink if you go outside if you go out somewhere and you stop at a coffee shop nowadays you you might not believe this but if you go to London you can spend maybe five or six pounds five or six pounds on one cup of coffee can you believe that I, I think that's terrible <laughs> I think that that is so extortionate but what about you are you a tea or coffee person please let me know we are just a few moments away from mr. Steve coming right here to entertain you I hope <laughs> is there any censorship in your country I know this is a very controversial subject one that some people don't like to talk about but I think we should talk about these things it is part of life and of course it is a very good way of expressing yourself in English Jeff says I like Kung Fu tea <laughs> is that a real thing is kung fu tea real i'm not sure about that thank you to rosa who says in brazil there is free coffee in the market really well i suppose you have lots of coffee there you see so that might be the reason why i like the idea of that i don't think there is anywhere here in the uk where you can get free coffee normally you have to buy one coffee and then maybe you will get some free coffee afterwards but of course you have to pay for it first and then after you finish your coffee you you can have another coffee they call it a refill refill so that means to put more of something into a container or for example a cup that has been used up you refill that's very nice thank you Alex Alex says coffee is very cheap in my hometown well all I can say is I'm very jealous that is one thing that puts me off drinking coffee outside in a coffee shop because it can be quite expensive okay here we go it's three o'clock you know what's coming next here he is the man who was yesterday out and about in much Wenlock investigating some very serious crimes oh mr. Steve is here here he comes everyone mr. Steve he is and well he's now he's become a private detective here he is hold that hold it up Steve so we can see it we can't see it there it is put it, put it in front <laughs> of you put it in front of your face like that <laughs> that's scary hello hello <laughs> Yes, and Mr. Duncan's giving me this uh, magnifying glass because he wants me to investigate the crimes that are taking place in Much Wenlock. Uh, I'm looking at something now. It's not very big, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, yes, fingerprints. I heard you talking about coffee. 
before I came on yes I get the feeling uh, have you just had a cup of coffee I've had a cup of coffee yes I'm buzzing I'm alive ready raring to go on mr. Duncan's show in fact I've had too much coffee today <sighs> calm down calm down oh my heart is beating <laughs> well that's you, good no I, it's good that your heart is beating <laughs> i heard you saying that you can't get free coffee <laughs> you can i know somewhere uh, where i can get free coffee you are such a show-off sometimes yes it, there's a certain supermarket in the uk that uh, if you shop there and spend more than i think it's 12 pounds something like that they'll give you a free coffee and yeah, i but, use that quite <laughs> regularly yes steve Steve, it's not free. Oh, I know. Technically, the nothing is free. You've got to spend some money. But if I'm going in there anyway to buy my lunch and some milk, butter, a bit of bread that I would buy anyway, then technically I am getting it free. You can't have things free. Technically, you either <laughs> pay for something or you, or you don't pay for something. What I mean is you can just go somewhere and they will give you a free cup of coffee so you don't have to pay anything or buy anything or or do anything you you just get your cup of coffee given to you for free church after ah. if you go to church you okay, get three cups then. of coffee oh well done well done yes you might be right yes. yes so you might go to a church there might be a special service or maybe some some special festival taking place so you might go to the church and they might give you free coffee but of course they will also also come around and ask for money as well you have to put some money in the in the little collection yes nothing is Cup. free you always have to pay for it somewhere <laughs> uh of course some people are very clever in life in going around getting getting people to give them free cups of coffee and tea and they never pay for anything <laughs> some people are sponges that's what we would call them people who are sponges they, they they they're like a sponge instead of soaking up water they're soaking up people's money and their belongings and free cups of coffee and tea and things like that it, sponger it, you seem to be talking from experience yes <laughs> not no i'm not the sponger <laughs> no i mean no i mean someone has sponged fr 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 from you well, we all know people like that in life who seem to uh, like, for example, if you go for a drink out somewhere or go out for a meal with a group of friends, uh, they'll not put their right amount of money in or they'll try oh. and forget to put any. Or if you go out with friends oh, and no. you're all buying a round of drinks, yes. there's always somebody who sort of manages to not have to buy any drinks for anybody. Yeah. We call it shirking uh, as well. Shirk. Mm. If you shirk, it means you avoid doing something. So yes, you're right. Yes. You might go to you might go to a bar or a pub, and then your friends are with you, and you buy your friends a drink. But but one of the friends doesn't buy a drink. They never ever buy a drink for the rest mm. of their friends. So yes, yes, you might you might have that sometimes. They we can refer to them as being a sponger, sponger. Yes so they sponge freeloading <laughs> a freeloader an expression an american oh, expression i like that freeloader so a freeloader yes. is someone who who likes to get things from their friends or their loved ones for nothing and within a group of friends say five or six friends there's always one person who gets this reputation for never paying for the drinks or or for example if you go out for a meal they might they might uh, not contribute the, the 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 right amount of of money towards the the, the payment of the meal yeah they might uh, be tight tight fisted tight fisted well i know i know people i i've got a particular friend oh no and not, if you go is this, out is this is this the friend you keep talking about every week well he that particular person <laughs> yes but i that there's at least two friends i know of that when you go out they don't drive so they can't drink but they will so you're buying a meal so if you're not if you're driving and you can't drink then you're only having like a soft drink a water or something like that but they'll have bottles of wine and uh, expensive beer and things like that and when it comes to totting up the bill totting totting up adding up the bill at the end between say a group of people then 
quite often it's common to divide it equally amongst everybody. That's fair. Instead of having to add up every individual separate order, it takes too long. Mm. You know, who's had the chips, who's had that. But of course, oh. if some people have had bottles of wine, then it's unfair to the people who are driving or yes. who aren't drinking the wine. But I know friends that constantly and so you end up spending five or ten pounds more you're paying for their drinks in other words yes okay i think we get that now it's always we the same people it annoys me Oof. yeah <laughs> i'll tell you i'll tell you what else annoys me is when you bang on that bloody chair just having a look at my nails here how do they I've look been chewing them have you been chewing your nails again steve yes i've been uh was one of my new 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 year's resolutions not to chew my nails but looking at this I haven't been chewing them, but I've been sort of picking away mm. annoyingly. Happy New Year. And there's a uh, Happy New Year to you <laughs> too. Happy New I'm Year, sure. Steve. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. When do we stop saying Happy New Year? It when, gets very when is annoying. It, when is it too late to say Happy New Year? Now, now yesterday mm. when we were in town, people were saying Happy New Year to each other. But it's two weeks now. Two, two weeks two weeks since the new year arrived i think it's too late now stop saying happy new year we know it's the new year we know 2018 has arrived we definitely know that we have lots of things to talk about first of we all do. much wenlock was on television that was a surprise we were we were very surprised i found yes. out that much wenlock was being featured in a new bbc program yes much wenlock was on the bbc on friday night so a special documentary all about the churches in this area and uh, the vicars the vicars the, oh, yes yes they were focusing on the vicars and here in much wenlock we have a very uh, i want to say eccentric charismatic charismatic slightly eccentric very modern i i suppose the word would be modern hip a very contemporary thinking mo a vicar would you say that yes i would say so but uh my mother goes to church and we always bring my mother up every week so <laughs> well she, you, well we do talk about your mother a lot we do anyway she goes to church and uh, they've got one of these modern vicars uh who try to do things differently and uh i think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to get more people to go to church uh in 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 the uk and uh because there's falling uh numbers of people going to uh church in the uk well to the church of england anyway and uh so they're trying to find ways of getting people more people to go more younger people things like that but of course in doing so they alienate the the older generation yes, and the annoy the older generation to annoy, uh, who who have been used to a more traditional type of sort of vicar standing in the pulpit yes we get uh, it we get it steve <laughs> he keeps cutting me off now you're almost it's rambling you're almost going into a sermon to a be sermon honest. yes <laughs> so <laughs> what they're trying to do is make the church more more hip and trendy hey come to church it's really cool and trendy come on we've got a trendy vicar yes so here in much wenlock we have a very trendy very hip modern vicar and and he refers is it true uh, can i if i remember rightly did he refer to god as the gaffer he did indeed he, he didn't say the he gaffer didn't say, he didn't say god he said the gaffer that's you see that's hip trendy <laughs> don't say don't use the word god use gaffer if you use god it'll put people off going of course gaffer means boss boss so the, yes. the person in charge it is a it is a sort of slang word slang for, word for the boss is there an echo in here <laughs> it's a slang word for the boss the person who is in charge so anyway we don't go to church do we steve well, I don't know that we need to reveal that. We don't, we don't go to church, but we do go sometimes for weddings. We're going to a wedding this year. We are indeed. A friend of mine is getting married and we're going to that wedding and that'll be quite exciting. Well, actually, I don't really like weddings. So <laughs> we'll be very excited. Sorry. The only reason I'm going is because... Uh, did you just I say it's very exciting and then you said, I don't like weddings? Well, the only reason I'm going 
is because she wants a choir to sing and she's ah. asked me if, if, if I'll be part of the choir so you're going to the wedding you've been invited I've been invited as well lots of free food free food you'll be on your own for some of it while I'm doing the bits with the choir I don't know what I don't even know what the music is yet. I, I, I couldn't yet. I couldn't I couldn't care less he couldn't care less I couldn't care as long as there's lots of free food um, well there will be but again nothing's free because you of course will have to buy a gift uh, which in this case which is common now is a donation of money uh, towards uh, the uh, honeymoon is what they've asked for so there may be free food well, but it's really <laughs> free because we've got sorry. Some money wait there a second so so we have to give money for their for their wedding night nuptials well yes instead of giving a gift which is traditionally what you do here in the uk you buy a toaster uh, or uh, or some crockery or something like that uh, and then you surprise the, uh, the the wedded couple with these gifts most of which of course they probably never use the best um, thing oh the best thing to buy are, are plates cut me off again plates because because when they have a row or an argument they can throw the plates at each other they could do yeah uh, yes so but now as a finishing what i was saying before you rudely interrupted mr duncan uh is that instead of just giving a gift that they don't necessarily want you either get a list of the things they do want and you buy that or they say give money towards something and this is one of those weddings where we're having to give money towards uh in fact their honeymoon so i don't know five pounds do you think <laughs> they won't get very far with five pounds <laughs> they'll be able to buy a meal out in a in a, in a cheap restaurant they can get some free coffee i suppose i suppose we'll give the the sort of amount that will cover uh maybe the food uh may, maybe feel as though we're paying our way whatever the food we think would cost for us to be be there for the the, the, the special meal they have uh in a wedding then maybe the, maybe I, i'm not going to say in case they're watching 20 pounds each you think 50 i don't know we'll work it out anyway I don't know how he got onto weddings. We were talking about I churches. Don't. So so I do like going to church for weddings and sometimes funerals. Of, of course, very sadly, one of my friends uh, died yesterday. Um, I was quite yes. shocked. So it looks as if I will be going to a funeral for one of my lovely friends who I met years ago and helped me get into radio and also gave me a lot of support in the early days. And sadly, he died yesterday. So a little bit of sad mm. news. I was very, very upset. So. Yes. can i say a big a big special goodbye to to one of my friends mike very very sad news so it looks as if i will be going to a funeral as well in in maybe two or three weeks time so some very sad news that i received yesterday now steve i believe you have something special for us today to actually read out because i thought last week let's do something different let's do something completely different some something we've never ever done before on the live stream so true we are now going to do something called <laughs> shakespeare on sunday now what i'm going to do is mr steve will be reading out i will be staying silent for a change hopefully <laughs> hopefully <laughs> mr steve <laughs> Mr. Steve is going to read out some Shakespeare. So we will leave it to Mr. Steve as we have our special Shakespeare on Sunday. Are you ready, Steve? Do you want me to do it now? Yes. OK. I was talking about it for the last 48 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> see, when I was talking about it, you see, and when I said now, <laughs> see, that's those were, the cue, is it? They were clues. <laughs> there were clues i thought we were going you were going to play a clip or something i thought you were good at spot i thought you were good at spotting clues right let's let's get on with it then do you want me to go now <laughs> okay so mr yes, duncan it's it's mr steve with shakespeare on sunday here we go well i don't i'm not an expert in shakespeare let's put it this way so let's start off with that so that people don't think I'm an expert in Shakespeare, but I do like reading lines out. So uh, this is an extract from the famous Shakespearean play called Hamlet. 
and this is from act two scene two and hamlet is uh the main character in this particular play and he is uh melancholic uh, which i suppose in modern speak you would say he's depressed he's down melancholic because uh, over the death of his father and uh, there are several uh, speeches soliloquies uh, throughout uh, this particular play Hamlet where he is expressing his uh, sort of depression uh, and he's talking about death a lot and uh, this is one particular passage so he's talking to a couple of friends here expressing why he's feeling so down so i have of late lost all my mirth forgone all custom of exercises and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame the earth seems to me a sterile promontory this most excellent canopy, the air, look you, this brave or hanging firmament, this majestical roof, fretted with golden fire, why, it appeareth no other thing to me than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. What a piece of work is man! How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? There we go, a short extract from Act 2, Scene 2, where Hamlet is talking to his friends. He's really describing Mr. Duncan. Oh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all, of a, all of a quiver after that. <laughs> I can hardly speak. I the emotion. See, I can see you quivering. Oh, the tears. I, I, need, I need some kind of oh, padding down or something. Yes, Hamlet is describing there how really he's so depressed that... He's describing how wonderful the world is, how it, all its, its wonderment and how wonderful man is. And yet, the, the ultimate phrase there, the quintessence of dust, what he's saying is that uh, despite all how wonderful everything is, it all turns to dust when somebody dies really that's what it's a bit a bit uh, uh, lamenting and a bit uh, a bit depressing but that's how he's feeling and haven't we all felt sometimes when we're in a, s a low state of mood we can't see the wonder in anything anymore can we well, well, that's what Shakespeare does he well, he looks at he looks at the humankind and looks at all our frailings and our emotions he tends and, to put uh, he tends to put life and humanity and the way we behave and the way we think under the the microscope the microscope or, or in this case the uh, <laughs> what i've got here under the magnifying under glass the looking at our emotions and expressing them that's it, that's the thing about shakespeare how wonderful it is every single faculty of human nature and emotions is explored in throughout his plays so uh, if you want to know what uh, how, you know, the expression of humankind, it's all in there. Uh, so, yes, he's, he's describing the human condition here of being very depressed and down, melancholic. And he can't see how wonderful everything is because he just thinks everything's turning to dust. So what's the point? Yeah, it's kind of like he's looking at the positive and negative at the same time so there it was mr steve reading yes. some shakespeare on sunday what did you think of that did you enjoy it we might do it again next week the it, frailty it, of human existence <laughs> we are here for mere 
short moments of okay, time and Steve. then we're gone. Okay. But where do we go? This is the thing. He, right. he thinks we go nowhere. But of course, if you believe in an afterlife, it's great. I'm going to move on to other things. I'm going to turn Steve off in a minute. There was some. Uh, what about some of the words in here? Do we need to explain some of the words? Well, let me just mention something first, if you don't mind. Go on. Oh. I've lost the connection. Oh, this always happens every week. Thank you, YouTube, for for disconnecting the <laughs> live chat. Did you nearly swear there, Mr. Doug? I nearly said something really bad there. Let me just <laughs> reconnect the uh, the live chat first of all. I don't know why. After the first hour, it disconnects you, so you have to reconnect it. So let's just do that. Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? Is <laughs> he's, he's an exciting moment of time? Are we all. on or aren't we? <laughs> we are on. And now, and now, so is the live chat. Oh, here we go. Are we it's, back? It seems Mr. Steve can do anything. I can switch off the internet. So yes, I think you did that last week, didn't you? <laughs> I still have my suspicion. I still have my suspicions that Mr. Steve actually destroyed the internet last week. I still think it's your fault. He always blames me for everything. Mr. Steve, can you please explain what the word? quintessence means. quintessence right well i looked this up because i didn't know what that meant uh quintessence of dust well that referred because this is obviously a very old play and the the yes. uh, laws of physics weren't very well explained at the time about 600 uh, years ago exactly so they didn't know much about how the world works uh in those days so they used to think that um which goes back to Greek times that there were sort of four elements. There was earth, uh, sky, uh, water and air. <laughs> I thought, you right. Were oh, well, you did ask me, Mr. You, Duncan. You know, you know what I was uh, going to say then? They used to think there were four no, elements, wait right? There, and, they used to, and the highest form wait of there. all those elements. <laughs> I thought you were going to say earth, wind and fire. Well, that's a pop group. <laughs> That's probably where it comes from. Or, so was it, to, or was it the temptations? I don't know. But they used to think there were these four sort of main elements. And the, and the highest form of all this was us. We were the quintessence, the highest form, I think that means, of dust, which is just everything, all the ingredients around us. So they used to think that uh, the highest form of everything was us. And yet that's a paradox. So quintessence of dust means the highest form of elements, the highest form of dust, meaning us. But of course, dust is still just dust. It's nothing. Mm. So it's a, a paradox, really. So despite us being these wonderful beings, we still will ultimately turn to dust. That's nice. Once again, Which Mr. Steve. Lovely. You asked me to read it out, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, but of course. If you're religious, then it doesn't matter because you're going to carry on existing anyway. So which is which is great, which I'm sure is a comfort for many people. That's right. We have lots of people on the live chat. The French Leo is here. Is it the result of the al alchemic of different elements? Yes, that's it. Alchemy it goes. Yeah, I think the Greeks first came up with this idea that there were there were four main elements that everything was made of interestingly enough he uses the word dust in this shakespeare but as we now know we all come from stardust yes. don't we that's where we actually come from so the very elements that, that give life are actually the same things that glow at night when you look up in the sky yeah. so all of those stars in the sky apparently According to scientists, we are made of exactly the same stuff. Yeah, so although they were they were actually though technically right then, six hundred years ago, we are made up of elements. It's just it wasn't just four, it was just uh, you know, hundreds of them. But that's one uh, of the reasons why, Steve, that Shakespeare is still revered today, because yes. he was well so ahead of his time. He was mm. he was like almost like the 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 prophecy of what we were going to do and think about later on so he was yeah. quite ahead of his time really and and of course many of the words that shakespeare coined or created are still used now we even quote shakespeare in daily english language so phrases and expressions that we use 
on a daily basis they actually <laughs> originated from Shakespeare I've, I've picked out a few little words and phrases that are useful if you want me to uh, if you want to help me in the understanding of those I don't know whether so for example he uses the phrase here lost all my mirth oh mirth good mirth, humor of course is yes humor but your good humor is your mirth so he's lost all his good humor we often talk about merriment the, the another very old word I, I think that also comes from the period of time that, that Shakespeare lived in um, merriment and mirth merriment and mirth we don't we do use mirth sometimes in a comical way uh, to talk about a sort of sense of humor um, a court jester uh, would uh, would be full of mirth that mm. sort of thing and of course we have the other very famous Shakespeare sonnet uh, 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 talking all about once again mortality uh, the very famous um, alas poor Yorick which I'm is also from Hamlet yes so Hamlet is a very dark play it it, it does um, it does focus on many of the very negative yes. things or or the sad things it's very somber but actually revenge if you can sit through it it is an amazing piece of work it discusses many of the frailties that every human has and that's one of the reasons why people still to this very day 600 years later still love shakespeare so i hope you enjoyed that pestilent um, a what sorry pestilent <laughs> pestilent that's a, that's a great word that's in here pestilent so what does that mean pestilent is sort of disease it's an old-fashioned word meaning sort of disease irritation uh that sort of thing so if if, if, if you're if you're pestilent it means that you you've got disease like the pox the small pox or something like that uh so it just means sort of diseased, really. Pestilent. Um, that word is used. I think people still use that word from time to time. It is they not? still. Yes, it is still in yes. current use. So we talk about pestilence when we have like maybe a plague of locusts or insects or yes. some disease that affects maybe the crops. We, we talk about pestilence. So, yes, a very, very old word. It is. So we've covered that so if you would like some more <laughs> shakespeare on sunday with mr steve if you would like some more next week please let us know we really did go quite <laughs> into in depth there we, yes. we went very in depth with that so if you'd like some more shakespeare next week we will get mr steve to read some more out now we've been asked to show mr steve once again doing his exercises so here is mr steve <laughs> i think you've edited this <laughs> to make it look rather rude mr duncan i don't i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness we are talking about censorship today is there any censorship in your country and would you describe yourself as a tea or coffee person which beverage do you prefer it's a great word that beverage it just means drink something that mr steve likes to do you like to drink coffee don't you steve i do i was just wondering actually after showing that clip whether whether we'll get censored by youtube i don't think so <laughs> but you are you are a bit of a keep fit fanatic i hope one week we can go into the garden because at the moment this is one of the things i feel very frustrated about and by 
because we can't go outside because the weather recently has been really bad of course it's winter so i'm really yes. looking forward to us going outside again live so we can actually do it for real outside actually live outside in the garden and maybe one week we can do some we can do some exercising in the garden yes i've been trying to increase my exercising not recorded live live, live exercising live exercises so so just in case if i have a heart attack or, or collapse on the floor it will be completely spontaneous <laughs> Keep and you, you can you can see the ambulance arrive and and slowly drag me across the lawn and we'll throw me into the back of the ambulance whatever happens we'll keep the cameras rolling <laughs> no, well, we might we might get we might get a few viewers even <laughs> dear no. manu d let's have a look at the live chat because of course it is your show live chat the style of talking between our two coaches is very interesting today. The level of strength is so high. Thank you very much for that. I'm also, excited. Maria, Maria, I'm saying hello to Maria. Yes, I've liked it a lot. Maria likes Mr. Steve's Shakespeare rendition. I'm no expert, but I think that's probably the first time i've ever really properly read a passage out well you, but, but you have performed shakespeare on the stage i have done but a heavily edited version don't forget that uh it's great oh, i was all overcome <laughs> after reading that so so was i olga says mr steve is a brilliant reciter and of course i would like more thank you olga for that good a uh, recruitment Eulitas says my house is terribly cold at the moment where are you but the topic because of the topic it oh. makes them very enthusiastic and a bit irritated sometimes i don't know what you mean by that oh, i'm sorry if we are upsetting you we're going to have some fun now we're alive mr steve is going to run around the garden naked. we are going to revel in our time mr steve's going to run around the garden naked Simona I'm not going to do that. Simona is talking about drinking. I drink a lot of thyme tea because oh, it's right. delicious and very good for the health. I'm a coffee person as well. Thank you, Simona, for that. Julie G says, I would love to do some exercising with Mr. Steve. OK, that's it. We're, it's, it's an exercise channel from now on oh we're going to get people fit and healthy for 2018 can we please not do that steve <laughs> i i don't like the idea of that 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 sounds like that sounds like a lot perhaps of, we can produce an exercise video that sounds like a lot of hard work i come running on in my shorts and a, and a tank top oh dear <laughs> do you remember this reminds me of something do you remember <laughs> when i i had a studio at the science park and you arrived one day to pick me up and you had your shorts on and everyone was staring at your legs now we weren't sure if they were admiring your legs or they were a bit disturbed by it but there was one person behind the reception and they actually commented on your legs yes you i remember? remember now yes do you remember that and you were mm. and for the rest of the day all, all steve <laughs> all steve talked about was the fact that someone admired his legs now i'm not sure about that we might do this one week we, again this is something we can do later <laughs> what are you looking at steve <laughs> just looking at my legs to see if they really are <laughs> worth looking at is it something very small that you need a magnifying glass for <laughs> dare you mr duncan <laughs> it's getting angry now <laughs> oh dear oh so yeah yes yes you you were very flattered so maybe one week we could we could do a comparison a live comparison maybe in the garden and we can show you our legs and you can decide who has the nicest legs personally i think my legs are lovely i've got very slim very thin legs and i have big big knobbly knees as well which i think look lovely Got big feet as well he's like the pink panther we have someone on the <laughs> <laughs> yes my feet are very big 
but you know what they say about people with big feet small brains big shoes <laughs> aha what do you prefer steve <laughs> what do you prefer boom boom says what do you prefer do you prefer tea or coffee uh both yes. i like it one cup of coffee a day at about 11 o'clock um and the rest of the, and i have about three cups of tea i've also got some nice sort of uh, herbal fruit teas uh, if we've got a little break i'll go out and get them and show you that's very nice they're quite uh, yes i do like making those as well i can yes. taste the coffee in my breath <laughs> coffee gives you bad breath oh. have you noticed that oh no coffee don't, breath don't say that i hate it do you, you know when yes. someone has had a cup of coffee and then they talk very close to you yes hello how are you and 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 all you can smell is coffee on their breath yes Ugh. and i'm sure i mean coffee have you uh, coffee grounds if you make your coffee from the beans and grind it up and then put it in one of those uh, things and make the coffee uh, if you leave the coffee grounds overnight to cool off the next day they s it smells like old tobacco it smells yes. like old cigarettes that's something you notice that yes I, I always think that that coffee breath smells exactly the same as tobacco breath yeah and, and I, I've always been slightly worried about that I've always wondered why yes. those two things smell the same so I think cigarette breath smells exactly the same as coffee breath it's very similar very similar but of course the coffee beans are roasted so they're heated up so you've probably got some of the same chemicals in there as you would get from burning tobacco mm. so i think that's why they smell so you smell coffee grounds when they're cold yeah. it's like it's like a cigarette it, it's like an ashtray yes it smells like an ashtray yes I, I i'm sure we so, are not uh, the per the first people i'm sure we are not the first to say this but i have i have noticed that in the past mm. radic radic says have you ever drunk have you ever t tried turkish coffee we haven't we but we we did live for a short time we went on holiday we didn't live there we went on holiday to turkey and we did sample some turkish tea we were we were walking around shopping weren't we steve and then the, this this the the owner of a shop invited us in and we sat with them for a long time talking about different things mm. and they were talking in english of course their english was very good and we had a lovely time and they gave us tea and also some some turkish delight as i'm well. sure i have had turkish coffee it's very strong mm. uh isn't the cup very small i'm not sure maybe who, who who maybe whoever's on who's asked us can tell us a bit about turkish coffee maybe it's a bit uh, like um what's what's that other one espresso it could be a bit like that because espresso is is normally in a very small cup it's very strong i was going to say something else about coffee then uh it's gone what the coffee no what i was going to talk about it's gone it's gone from my mind it's gone from your brain that brain cell has shriveled up and it's fallen out of your ear that's not very nice keeps you awake <laughs> definitely keeps you awake coffee apparently yes turkish coffee is very strong yes it's not for everyone so yes i think i think that is the point that's coming across now right. it's very very strong i don't mind i don't mind strong coffee i don't like it too strong where it it sort of it, it sort of seems to to resonate in your in your head i don't like it too strong <laughs> resonate in your head yes it seems like the coffee is going <laughs> up into your brain it oh, seems right, like okay. it seems like your brain has been replaced with with coffee beans i don't like coffee coffee f chocolates coffee flavored chocolates no no one likes coffee flavored chocolates no one likes them why do they do that can, can i just say if there's there's anyone watching from from a chocolate factory can you mm. please stop stop making coffee flavored chocolate because no one likes it i've never met anyone who like is it is there anyone out there now who likes the no chocolates one. with with the coffee flavored center no one likes it every year if if you if you buy a box of chocolates for someone you mm. can guarantee that the ones that are left in the box are all coffee flavored and no. yet 
No one likes it. And yet, strangely, if you have a cup of coffee with chocolate, that's actually quite acceptable. That's actually quite nice. Ah, yes. But, but I think that's because it's probably milk chocolate, maybe, or, or dark chocolate. I, it, never, it doesn't work when you're trying to make coffee flavoured chocolate. And no. yet if you have the coffee and the chocolate and, and, and eat them, drink the coffee and eat the chocolate at the same time, that's quite pleasant. Yes. I don't know why. But no, nobody, nobody likes coffee flavoured chocolates. So if you have a box of chocolates, if you know anyone that works at a chocolate factory, just tell them to stop doing it because no stop one, there must be, you know what I imagine somewhere there is a big pile of of coffee flavored chocolates all piled up just slowly rotting away because no one likes them that's what i think if anybody does <laughs> let us know now so do you like coffee flavored chocolates you know mm. it's the chocolate that has the soft center so inside it it tastes like coffee but no one likes them no it's one it's always too bitter bitter in in it just yes. it just makes you feel very sick afterwards mm. so there you go are you enjoying today steve yes we had a lot of people <laughs> watching today by the way a very big audience thank you very much for supporting us and of course thank you very much also can i say a big thank you once again to a lovely lovely lady andrea santi thank you very much for your lovely donation during the week apparently it is also a christmas present as well for me so thank you very much and of course if you wish to make a small donation through paypal you can there it is there is the address under the screen right now just underneath me have you got it i hope so that's very nice there is someone at the moment in the live chat with a very interesting name this is something that we mentioned actually last week there is someone in the live chat called grammar nazi oh yes now we mentioned this at the end of last week didn't we now i was thinking to myself what is a grammar nazi do you think it's a good idea to mention it now steve yes why not yes to my mind it meant uh well the nazis were very very uh uh dictatorial and uh, and uh and uh well we all know what the nazis are so i i think it's quite a good i think uh it sort of was saying that this person is very strict and correct with their grammar that's it that's i've, I've actually saying. got the definition on the screen right now so a grammar nazi this is from the urban dictionary ah. <laughs> by the way can i just re recommend the urban dictionary it is Ooh. a great service available online and they give you lots of colloquial words and expressions things that also might not appear in for example the oxford english dictionary so grammar nazi is a person who uses proper grammar at all times especially online and in emails and also chat rooms and instant messaging services and also web boards they are a proponent a proponent of grammatical correctness proponent is a person who pushes for things to be done in a certain way so if you are a proponent of grammatical correctness that means you are always telling people how to use grammar correctly or how to spell correctly so there it is i hope that's useful you can also stop the video and make a note of that so that's something we mentioned last week and i, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to talk about it but it is something that is mentioned quite a lot and there is also another one as well so there's grammar nazi what's the other one that some people say as well i can't remember what it oh i remember there was an episode of the comedy program seinfeld where there was a guy who worked in in a soup cafe oh yes and he was very strict and they called him the soup nazi because he was yes. very very strict very uh, almost he got angry over everything especially if people disrespected his soup and and the particular way that he wanted to serve it in a certain way and you had to queue up didn't you in an orderly fashion in this particular in this particular comedy sketch but yes anybody who's a nazi of anything that means they're very strict about uh, you could you, you could be an english nazi couldn't you 
<laughs> I suppose so. Well, well, grammar Nazi kind of covers that, but I'm sure a lot of people might find it it offensive talking about it. But it is it is a real expression mm. that is used, even though I, I have noticed that the the Oxford English Dictionary doesn't have it in there, doesn't use it. Um, but it is available elsewhere for the definition. And of course, we showed it earlier as well. So can I just recommend the Urban Dictionary? It is available on the Internet. I'm not being sponsored by them. I don't get any money from them, but they are a very good service for for looking up and finding those words that are, are normally hidden from view words and phrases. And of course, sometimes very naughty words as well rude words so i hope you enjoyed that it's been a very busy one today certainly has you want me to go and fetch my special herbal teas would you like to get your herbal tea mr St <laughs> mr steve i don't know why mr got steve time. mr steve wants to get his herbal tea so yes you are more than welcome steve if you want to get your herbal tea off he goes <laughs> he'll be back in a moment don't worry we have another 12 minutes to go and then we are going to go let's have a look on the live chat i sometimes get told off for forgetting about the live chat grammar nazi yes are you a native english speaker someone says on the live chat hi everyone from france watching in bergerac there was a tv show here in the UK called Bergerac about a police detective a tobacco a tobacco Nazi is a person who wants an absolute ban on smoking thank you Swan yes that's the one I was trying to remember that's what I was trying to remember I was trying to remember tobacco Nazi a person who is very very much an anti smoker to show to my twin flam how much he was addicted to coffee i spilled coffee beans and sugar on the floor thank you chasandra for that so that he had to clean up the space so you threw the coffee and the sugar around <laughs> i do hope he is now cleansing his body so when you say your twin flam what, what what does that mean i don't know what that means twin flam i've never heard that expression before boom boom is the is the name of a song <laughs> says jamal yes i think so let's have a look at once again at today's mystery idioms the mystery idioms of course i almost forgot them today but here they are so the mystery idiom the first one and the second one i think this one is very easy so there they are the mystery idioms i will give you the answers in around about 10 minutes before we go mr steve has returned with something in his hand what do you have in your hand mr steve i've got a, a various selection of, of sort of herbal teas that i sometimes uh, oh wait there sometimes. Let's, let's put your microphone on that helps I've got a selection of various <laughs> herbal teas which I uh, I uh, enjoy from time to time. And uh, shall I show the first one? Go on. This one. I'm not promoting this particular range, but uh, there is a nice range we can get in supermarkets here called uh, Pucker Teas. And they come in a whole variety of different flavours. <laughs> Pucker. This one is... Uh, this one is elderberry and echinacea what what so, the uh, heck <laughs> what the heck is echinacea so oh it smells gorgeous uh well elderberry we, elderberry is a, is, is a dark colored berry of course uh and echinacea is is uh is a herbal it's supposed to boost your immune system okay uh, elderberry is supposed to do the same so this one is uh you, it, it it's a very dark it comes out as like a purpley drink and i like to put honey in it afterwards so the color is and, purple uh, color is purple because of the elderberries and the echinacea is sort of a pinky color and that's supposed to help you with your immune system uh, and but it's delicious with honey it absolutely tastes gorgeous so i love that one and here's another one 
These these pucker teas are sort of based on sort of Indian tea. Interest Indian tea. That's nice. Has anybody ever tried Indian tea? It's a bit like uh, uh, it's a bit like sort of British dark tea as we have here, but it's got all sorts of other herbs and spices so in it, like cardamom. And could could you describe sweet. that? Could you describe that as black tea? Yes, black tea is what I meant to say, as opposed to green tea. Uh, I think black tea is green tea that's been sort of fermented a bit. I think green tea goes black when it's sort of uh, treated or fermented in a certain way. So green tea is the natural tea, and, uh, and black tea is uh, something is done to it in a process that turns it black. So you might say um, that it's sort of fermented. I think it's. I think the word is fermented. Uh, it's sort of left to stew a bit. They do something with it. I'm not entirely mm. sure. But here's another one: licorice and cinnamon. So licorice and cinnamon. So that one smells of. Oh, cinnamon. That's got a very. And you oh. like cinnamon, don't you, Mister? Duncan? I absolutely love cinnamon. There, there's a breakfast cereal that has cinnamon in it, and I'm absolutely crazy oh, about yeah. that. Yes, uh, apparently Eugene says. I like cinnamon and blackberry herbal tea. Oh, that sounds nice. And again, this one, this one comes out of brown colour, and it's it, this is like very warming. Cinnamon is warming, and licorice is warming. Mm. So you have that on a cold day with a with with some honey or something, and and it's uh, oh, it makes you sort of just feel warm from the inside out. Uh, here's another one, which uh, if you're feeling a bit excited. Or if you can't sleep very well, this is a traditional herbal remedy: chamomile. Ah, chamomile tea or chamomile infusion. I think a lot of people are going to be familiar with this. If you want to go and have a good night's sleep, chamomile, which is a which is a kind of herb, uh, is supposed to calm you down. Uh, before you go to sleep of course if you have too much of it you'll wake up in the night and want to go to the toilet uh, so uh, <laughs> I don't like having lots of lots to drink before I go to bed because you always wake up about four hours later wanted to go to the loo oh here's an interesting one this this, this is something that we're going to both enjoy <laughs> okay the the French Leo says do you know copy Louvac or Louvac it is a bit special an animal will eat the coffee and after the people will take the poo to make the drink. It is not a joke. It is a bit special. This tea. I don't like the sound of that. So what they do, they, they get an animal. I don't know which animal it is. <laughs> which so so you have to you have to get the animal to eat the coffee and then they have a big poo. Ah yes, look, we're talking about poo. Yeah. Oh, I, it's every a, week. It's a poo moment once again. <laughs> So the, and and then then they take the poo, and then they make coffee from the poo. Uh, to to be honest, I th I'm sure I've had some coffee that has tasted a bit like sh poo. I've I've heard of something similar where you yes I have heard of something similar where you grind up the feces of an animal, roast it, and yeah you can make coffee out of it. Oh, isn't that disgusting? No, you'll have bad breath after that one. <laughs> you'll you'll have bad everything. <laughs> you will definitely have bad breath after having coffee made oh, from dear. poo. Apparently, it's it. Amanda says, "Is it a, a weasel? What what do you do? You just squeeze it, do you? You just squeeze the weasel, and all all the poop comes out into your coffee cup." I don't like the sound of that. None of that is good. Coffee oh. gives you bad breath. Coffee from ground up feces is definitely going to give you bad breath. I don't I don't think yes yes that, that's that's probably the reason why some people have bad breath maybe they've been making their coffee from poop I can I had that cup of coffee two hours ago but I can still taste it I'm <laughs> sure my breath is foul apparently apparently this particular coffee is also very very expensive <laughs> it gets worse this this story gets worse well some people drink their own urine don't they there's another there's another thing talking about funny drinks. What? Yes, they do. It's a, Stop it's, it. There's a, well, we won't go into that, but obviously uh, there is uh, there is there are certain people who think what it's a benefit. Stop it. To Steve. drink your own you. Steve, shut up. Stop. Stop saying these things. Again, I'm thinking bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's just. <laughs> 
apparently chasandra says twin flame i don't know what you mean do you mean your partner chasandra when you say twin flame do you mean your partner do you mean your other half your the flame. person the yes. person the person you are romantically connected to Ooh. a flame time lord is here hello time lord Ooh. we drink coffee with turkish delight ah oh yes <laughs> turkish oh. delight oh i love turkish oh delight. steve now look what you've done steve people now are saying my young my young he hayes says urine is good for your skin I, I i no no it isn't stop it stop stop saying these things i knew when as soon as i said it i knew i've said the something that would be controversial can everyone stop encouraging comment? stop encouraging mr steve to say these things <laughs> it's put me off my tea i'm having lovely salmon tonight again my sunday salmon and and to be honest all this talk of drinking poop is putting me off my my lovely salmon supper which Glass of, course, of lemonade mr steve will be making later oh apparently it's from the mongoose the, the mongoose the stomach of the mongoose says tias tia does the mongoose survive the uh <laughs> is this some some horrible form of animal cruelty we're talking about here yes. i hope not mystery idiom time let's give away the answers to the mystery idioms because we are going in a moment oh mr duncan don't go please lots of people are going to say please don't go can you please stay we'll be back forever <laughs> the mystery idioms are here so the answers are coming right now so here is the first one i think uh, did anyone get this i think a couple of people got this right and the answer is the final straw or the last straw the meaning is a further difficulty or annoyance that comes on top of a series of previous difficulties that makes a situation unbearable. You cannot take any more. This latest difficulty is the final straw or, or of course, the last straw. And the second one, the second mystery idiom i thought this was quite easy quite a few people got this right so well done congratulations steal the limelight or of course you could say steal the spotlight so if you steal the limelight limelight it means to take away or distract attention from one or more people to rob someone of their moment to shine or stand out by drawing attention to yourself is to steal the limelight or of course i suppose you can also say steal the spotlight so there are the answers to today's mystery idioms i thought they were quite good ones today you've accused me of stealing your limelight haven't you mr duncan sometimes mr steve likes to steal my mm. limelight because sometimes he's just a little too clever for his own good now i don't know what you mean mr duncan stop it <laughs> stop trying to steal my limelight so I, I believe you are going to be busy over the next few weeks steve i'm going to be very busy over the next few weeks will you still be here yes i will still be here there'll be one sunday when i won't be here in february oh i won't be here on the 17th oh dear so please ma make a note the 17th of february mr steve will not be here but we will hopefully do some recorded things so mr steve will be here but not live on the 17th of february Perhaps we can find somebody else to stand in in <laughs> my place and the who who would want to come on this show can can you think of anyone steve who would want to come on here would you want would you like to come on who wants to come on the show instead of steve anyone see i told you answers no, on a postcard not a single person <laughs> yes i'm busy because i'm learning uh i've got a part in an amateur dramatic production of the mikado 
which is a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta, which I'm very much looking forward to, and I've got to learn my part in that, and it's on the 17th of February. Uh, so I'm getting very excited, and because it's out of copyright, because it's over 100 years old, yeah. Mr Duncan has said, would I be willing to maybe sing a few little songs, a few little passages from it in future uh, lessons? So yes, the answer is yes, I will. And uh, so yes, there's something to look forward to. So Mr Steve is going to hopefully give us some live singing performances, but not today. Can you hold it up again, Steve? There we go. That's it. The Mikado. So that is the show that is a musical composed by Gilbert and Sullivan. Lots and lots of I suppose you could call them operas. Comic comic operas. And the you will be performing comedy. You will be performing some and, uh, they're, some they're songs. Comic opera. Yes, it's great fun. I love it. And I've never done this one before. Of course. Done lots of the Gilbert and Sullivan operettas, but not this one. Of course, one of the things that Gilbert and Sullivan do, they give their shows a name, but then they give it an alternate name as well. So they hold do. it up again. So let's have a look. It says the Mikado or. <laughs> what does that say? The town, town of. of Titty Poo. Titty Poo. It's a made up name <laughs> because the theme, this is based on a, a Japanese theme, this uh, <laughs> operetta. The town of Titty Poo. I think when it was written, probably 1880, somewhere around there, someone will correct me. There was a lot of interest in Japanese culture in England at the time. And uh, there were lots of scenes of, uh, uh, of Japanese people and and culture seen on vases and fans and things like that so they wanted to write something about that it was a topical subject everyone was excited about it in England at the time because a lot of people hadn't seen very much about uh, Japanese culture so they wrote a little comic opera about it okay so that is not politically you think would be politically incorrect but I think it uh, I don't think it is at all now it's very it's for done in a very sympathetic way Aradas says yes light opera is an operetta light opera that correct he is absolutely correct spot on so we're not we're not doing Pavarotti you know we're not doing the uh, sort of merchant of Venice type <laughs> it's just all very low all very low key but lovely tunes and lovely melodies apparently you can join me Mr Duncan apparently this the the, the 17th is a saturday correct you, well, oh no and, and the 18th the 17th yes. and the 8th we've got yeah. two performances one on the 17th and one on the 18th you see our viewers are smart cookies they really oh, are yes there's so, no yes. flies on your listeners your viewers there's no flies on them no there might be a few on us this time <laughs> this time next week that's a good expression dear me mother might be flies on me i've been sitting still for ages yes you, you oh i see the shirt you're wearing looks like a, na a newspaper board how oh, does it yeah i've had this i've had this shirt for years <laughs> but every time i wear it people say oh that's an interesting shirt uh, where did you get that from i said i've had it about 10 years yes interesting is one word you could use i suppose very it's very the word i want to use is garish i don't know what it's supposed to represent really it looks like a newspaper stand. I turned up to this once. We, uh, we it, there was a, a I, I, I was in this big choir in Birmingham, and they were having uh, an event which only happens. I think every, I think it was their twentieth anniversary, something like that. And I didn't realise you were supposed to turn up in black tie, which is a bow tie and a dinner suit. Oh, okay. Because I'd missed that particular email, so I turned up in this. <laughs> So everyone else was dressed in black tie. Everyone else was wearing a bow ties because it was a big event with a meal and everything and speeches. And I turned up in this. I felt embarrassed all night. I can tell you, I wanted to sit in a corner and hide away. Another Mr. Steve faux pas. Read the emails carefully when you get invites to events like that on the dress code Silviak Silviak says the shirt is very funky funky oh, thank funky you. I hope the YouTube subtitles get that right funky oh, funky funky 
Thank let's, you. Let's just keep saying funky and see what YouTube does with that word, whether they, they put the proper word or the, the rude word funky. Having a look now to see who this shirt is by. OK, I'll give them a plug. It's by a, a clothing company called Blue Ink. Blue Ink. Spelt I N C. Oh, I see. I so like like Blue Incorporated. It could well be. Oh, fancy pants. Or should I say fancy shirt? We'll see you next week, Steve. Yes, that's it. I'll we, see we, you we, too. We, we are now in overtime. Overtime. Do we get do I get paid extra for that? No, not a penny. He's never paid me anything, you know. So let's have a last look at the live chat and then we are going to go down the road. Faux pas. Yes. Thank you, Aradas. A faux pas is a mistake or an error. You make something you do do something incorrectly, which, of course, comes from the French word for false step, false step. Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve, greetings from Recife or Recife in Brazil. I've had a lot of fun today and I'm looking forward to next Sunday too. Thank you very much. Mikado is the Emperor of Japan, by the way. Yes, that is correct. Ah, Steve knows these things. <laughs> I should do. I'm in it. <laughs> you, cer <laughs> you certainly are in it. <laughs> Up to your neck. Belarusia. Hello, Belarusia. The time is over. How sad. Yes, I know we have to go now. Lots of people are joining us, but sadly, we have come to the end of the show. I'm hungry. Are you? Yes. <laughs> what do you want to eat? I'm going to have some bread because we were we were we were we bought that bread yesterday. Yes. And I know it's still in there. This delicious tiger bread. We bought some lovely bread yesterday. So Steve is now going to have some bread and butter i'm having some bread and butter yes yes your your viewers are your bread and butter mr duncan yes it Without is a, them, it is an no expression show. it's an expression as well in english so a person's bread and butter is their basic essentials the things they need to survive or the things they need to continue it is your bread and butter yes at work because i i'm in a sales job and at work they often say uh, you've got your certain base of customers and uh, maybe you're looking for new customers, but they always say, well, don't forget your bread and butter customers. <laughs> the ones that always are there every year. Don't neglect them. The ones you need. The ones you need. They don't know. Don't neglect them. OK, we're going now. That's it. It's time to disappear. We are going to end with Mr. Steve doing his physical exercises. And don't forget, you are back next week, aren't you, Steve? I am back next week. That is 100 percent certain. He's back next week at three o'clock. I will be back next Sunday. Uh, let me just find the time if I can find the piece of paper with it on. <laughs> I have so <laughs> much stuff here sitting around. We are back, of course, every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. Don't forget every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. We are live on YouTube. Catch you later, Mr. Steve. Bye for now. There he goes. Mr. Steve has left the building or at least he is going to leave now. There he goes. <laughs> See you next week. It's time to go. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the last two hours and ten minutes exactly. Wow, that is so precise. We will see you next week. Stay happy, stay healthy and of course you know what's coming next. You know what's coming next. Yes, everyone is writing it on the live chat. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>